Hey guys, this is Robsom's Red 7. Today we'll be going over on how to do dot style stippling on a garter frame. Now the reason why I chose the garter frame for now is because this is the frame that a customer provided for me. You can do this on a nebula frame or a WE frame. I do not recommend you to stipple a Tokyo Murray frame because the plastic melts much quicker. If you want to do stippling for your Tokyo Murray frame, go ahead, you can do it. It's just that I do not recommend it because it's a little bit more trickier to do. Um, if you're very experienced with stippling, of course, it won't be a problem for you, um, but it's just personal preference, that's all. So, basically, uh, let me tell you about what I've done to the frame so far. So basically, I've done a removed the finger grooves over here, uh, flattened it out, and did all the frame preparation work. I still need to do a little bit more work at the back over here. I don't know if you can tell on camera. Basically, there's some marks here that will interrupt the dot stippling. Uh, this is absolutely necessary if you want your dot stippling to wear out, to work out. The reason why is because if you do not prepare the frame properly, each bumps or imperfections on the frame will show up when you do your dot stippling. Let me give you guys an example. So here is a stock Tokyo Murray frame. So basically, can you see all these little grooves, all these little areas here? These areas will all interrupt the dot stippling, especially when your dot goes over this. It will show up in a shadow. It will also make the grip feel slightly inconsistent. So that's the reason why personally, whenever I do st dot stippling, I do a lot of preparation work. In fact, for this frame alone, I probably spent about one hour just preparing the frame, just, you know, sanding down everything, make sure everything is, is relatively clean. Uh, in fact, I'm not even done yet. So that's the thing I need to clean up a little bit more. That's why I actually stopped stippling here. Because I wasn't paying attention, I was watching, uh, I was watching videos when I was doing this, so I wasn't paying attention. I need to clean that up a little bit more. So, so that's the first thing you do is the, just the frame preparation, just sanding down everything, doing whatever you want. I chose to remove the finger grooves, is because the customer wanted the finger grooves removed. Um, he also wanted the back, uh, flat. So that's the reason why I decided to do that. I haven't done the trigger cuts and all that stuff. If you want to know how all that works. Uh, do watch my other video teaching you guys how to do your frame preparation for stippling, which I actually covered how to do that cut and how to do the trigger guard cuts. In fact, throw this video later on, you actually see how that works out. The second thing you need is a stippling iron. Now, my stippling iron is hot right th at the moment, so that's the reason why you will not see me touching it too closely. So. This is just regular stippling iron that you can buy anywhere, really. Um, right now, the tip is slightly sharp. So as you can see, it's just a little bit sharp. It's actually not that sharp. Um, I did use a file and just make sure it's as clean as possible. Um, in fact, I do that every single time after I touch plastic. Uh, the reason why that is because the plastic actually stays on the stippling iron itself. So I highly recommend you to take care of it and just make sure that tip is as sharp as, that, as, as it can be. You will also need something where you can um, quickly clean off the iron. Uh, the reason for doing this is because as plastic builds up on this, each time you make your pit, that plastic will carry on to the next pit and it will make your pits inconsistent. It will make them also very messy. You will also have excess plastic flaring out of the dot stippling. That's the reason why when people do dot stippling, they try to make it as consistent as possible, unless you're trying to go for a different kind of effect. For example, I believe in the United States for practical applications, I believe for actual glocks, people like to do something called a charcoal stippling. I have not tried doing that. It basically looks like charcoal afterwards, like, um, like a much bigger pit, a much darker pit. That's a little bit more rough. So that's an example of where it's sort of like a super special kind of dot stippling. We're not going to do that here in this video. We'll basically do some regular stuff only. So, I've already stippled uh, a portion of the frame already. As you can see, now, um, in Hong Kong, I want, you, I want you guys to actually understand something. This is not a professional service. This is just something I happen to do. If you like the way I do it, then sure, great, we can talk. But basically, um, I think I charge about... I charge about 60 Hong Kong dollars for grid stippling, which we will not cover in this video. And I sometimes charge a little bit more, like 80 to 100 Hong Kong dollars for dot stippling. And this is just because it takes a lot more effort. It takes a lot more time to do. 
So, and this is also not a professional service. So that's the reason why I charge that kind of price for stippling. This includes the frame preparation, except for the frame cuts. In this case, the customer paid for the frame cuts and everything. So in this case, I'll be doing the frame cuts and everything, and I'll be charging them 200 total for all of this later on, which you will see at the end of the video. So let's just start, start stippling. Now, there's uh, the trick to this is purely the position of your hand. When you do your stippling, make sure you do it perfectly vertical. That is the how I make every single dot appear to be very consistent. Can you see that virtually every single dot looks exactly the same? The trick is just consistency, and this is how I do it. So, I just basically get a box, and I position the frame in a way where I can hold the stippling iron directly on top. So, let me reposition the camera just so that you can actually see what my technique actually looks like. Okay guys, so we just got closer to the frame. Now the camera is still actually very very close to my hands and uh, it's incredibly close to my stippling iron so forgive me if I only do a couple of dots but I'll try to film as much as I can. So here we go. I'm just going to do my regular, regular stippling uh, technique and we will talk about it as I do it. Now, can you see this area over here? We'll start over here. So basically, you know this whole entire time when I've been um, I didn't film this earlier when I was stippling this, but I wasn't following any particular direction or any particular type of pattern. I was simply going wherever I felt like going. So I'll actually do this in front of you right now. Stupid phone. As you can see, my stippling is actually not that good. Um, is This is actually a very, very bad stippling. If you want to do the proper kind, it's much, much deeper. It's also much more cleaner when other people do it. Um, I'm very sloppy when it comes to dot stippling. So this is honestly not the best tutorial video on how to do stippling. But people were curious as to how I do it. Um, I just dab the plastic very, very lightly. Um, for like barely barely half a second. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is that it's best if you let your stippling iron sit out for like a good two minutes or three minutes just so that it's perfectly it's really really hot. If you use one of those kinds with a, with a trigger to make the stippling iron hot, uh, be wary that you have to be very careful with the way you manipulate that because a stippling iron that looks a little bit like a like a pistol, it's very very hard to hold. So. If you, choose to, if you choose to use those, do so at your own risk. But I like more of a pen. So as you can see, I just basically, um, I, tr I almost treat stippling like a color pen. I basically fill out any, any place that looks like I did not fill it properly. So if you look at this right here, can you see that Every single dot looks like it's covered, right? But the thing that you cannot see is because the, the camera resolution just simply cannot show you. There's a little bit of inconsistency here and a little bit of inconsistency here. It's basically there's like a slight melting of the plastic that I overdid over here. It is very, very subtle and very difficult to see. This is something that you just have to see with your own eyes in order for you to tell. Um, this is the best that my camera can do. So hopefully you, you guys can see it. If you can't see it, then don't worry about it too much. If you're doing stippling for the texture only, just to enhance the grip texture on your Glock, then don't care about it too much. If you're doing it for looks, then you probably care.
Okay, now I just filled in this little area and I just topped off that little area over here. Now, as I move towards the curved areas, it is worth leveling that area to your stippling iron. Move, manipulate the frame so you get a perfect dip onto that area. Now, the reason why you do this instead of manipulating your own iron is because you have to hold your irons, your stippling iron at an angle. Whenever you hold this at an angle, remember that your plastic will also melt at an angle. So, that's the reason why I like to pretend that my hand stays in the same position every single time. The only thing that changes in terms of position is the frame itself. That's how I personally like to do it. This way, uh, the consistency is where my hand is. Notice how I'm manipulating the frame. Okay, see, now right now, the tip of my iron, there's a little bit of plastic, so this is where I clean it off. Okay, and I clean it off by doing this. I just simply take the bottom of here, clean the tip a little bit, okay, and then you go back to stippling. Now, it is very important that every 10 dots or so, maybe about 20 dots, um, clean it up. I basically clean it up whenever I see the dot changing, so I don't have to stop every single time. Uh, again, this is just based purely on uh, experience. Okay? It's not a must, um, and, and you can also tell that as I'm doing this, that not every single dot is perfect. Now this is where I'll go off pattern a little bit. I will actually start somewhere else now. I'm actually building this frame for a customer who wants to build one of those salient arms uh, with a one of those Taiwan state salient arm slots. So this is really difficult to do, especially around these curved areas. I'll also let you know another thing is best if you wear gloves because these irons can get very hot. Now, as I stipple, can you actually see that all my dots are actually very closely packed? That's actually how I try to do most of my stippling. I try to do the stippling where every single dot is very, very compact, very close to each other. And that's basically how you do stippling without uh, making weird... Like basically, if, you, if you're treating stippling more for the aesthetics, uh, do keep in mind that your this is this is sort of like a col I treat stippling sort of like a color filling. Basically, you don't want to, I don't leave any uh, different colors hanging around.
Now, can you see that I accidentally formed this little curve over here? So basically, I just go off in a random direction and slowly fill that up. Can you see that I do not, I, my, I do not go in any dir particular direction? So just now I took the iron off because my dots start to change change uh, size. So I basically recover those dots a little bit by putting the iron there again over the dot that was in. And um, as, as you can see throughout the the technique is basically to draw the outlines. When you draw the outlines first, it basically gives you a very good area just to start filling. Treat them, uh, treat them as if they were like like taped, and basically just fill in this area over here. Just fill it in. In this area, I chose to leave that Glock logo. Now notice that as I get closer to the edge, I take my time. As you get closer to the edge, it's um, much more. Um, it requires a little bit more care, just so that you don't want to mess up. So I really do take my time when I go to the edge. Alright guys, so I'm finally finished stippling. Uh, this is basically the finished product. As you can see, I did the rest of the frame cuts, the cuts over here, and I also fitted a real steel uh, salient arms mag well. I'm not exactly sure what edition this is, but it's basically the real steel one. It's not really much to note, to tell the truth. Um, anyways, but that's not about this video, it's about the stippling. Can you actually see that the color is very, very distinctive? There's no gaps in anything. There are a couple of mistakes. So can you look at the back over here? Can you see that there's a slight depression over here? That's actually a very, very good example of what can go wrong when you do this kind of stippling. Whenever you decide to do dot stippling, can you see very closely that you can almost cannot see it. But when you step back, you'll see a shadow. And that shadow basically will be an inconsistent bump. This is the real reason as to why you sand down these areas over here. That's the reason why throughout this whole entire pattern, it looks very, very consistent. That's the reason why it looks very, very clean. It's because when you stand, when you sand that area down, it just makes for a very, very clean surface. 
as you can see that there's even a slight imperfection over here it's very very hard for you to tell on camera this is something that you truly have to see with your own eyes in order to tell but i'm telling you right now that if you want your still playing to feel um a little bit more uniform a little bit smoother i highly recommend you to spend more time on the frame preparation because that's what ultimately gets your frame to feel very very good and also it gets the stippling to look very good if looks are a factor for you which i believe most people are concerned about that especially if you're building a a tokyo murray clock um, nowadays it's more for show to tell the truth uh, at least that's what it seems to me most people would like to build them just because you know you know there's an agency arms oh there's sailing arms and all that stuff anyways so yeah that's basically the end of the video guys um hope hope this video helps you Hope this guy. Uh, hope this gives you an insight as to what goes on in my lair, I suppose, as to how I do all my custom work for all my custom blocks and all that stuff. This is the exact same process I go through. It's very, very takes quite a long time to do dot stippling. Very, very painful to do. But hope this video helps you a little bit. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I also have a Facebook page that you can follow me on, in which there will be a link in the description box below for you guys to check out. I tend to do regular updates on Glock builds and everything else that I do. Uh, peace guys. Happy shooting.